Hello everyone. Welcome to another video. In this, we will do a deep dive into garbage collection. We will try to cover complete garbage collection in two parts. In the first part, we'll cover introduction to garbage collection. Why do we need it? Then we will see the process of garbage collection, including generational garbage collection process as well. And in the end, we'll also see how we can configure the memory for JVM explicitly for heap components. So without any further delay, let's start. So what is garbage collection? Garbage collection is an automatic process of looking at heap memory, identifying which objects are in use and which are not, and deleting the unused objects. An in-used object or a referenced object means that some part of your program still maintains a pointer to that object. And an unused object or unreferenced object is no longer referenced by any part of your program. So the memory used by an unreferenced object can be reclaimed. In programming languages like C, allocating and deallocating memory is a manual process. In Java, process of deallocating memory is handled automatically by garbage collector. Why do we need garbage collection at all? In the running applications, objects will be created and those objects will need some space on heap for storage as all the new objects which are getting created, they will be stored on heap. If proper deallocation of the memory of unused object is not done, then it will keep filling the heap space which will eventually result into out of memory error and stops the application. Garbage collection does the cleanup job to remove unused objects and free the space for new objects. Next is uh, the process of garbage collection. So it is mainly of two steps. First one is marking the unused objects and second one will be removing the uh, unused objects. The first step in the process is called marking. This is where garbage collector identifies what all objects in the memory are in use and what are not in use. So all the referenced objects, uh, they will be kept, but all the unreferenced objects, they will be marked for the removal. And in the second step, uh, the deletion, which is also of two type, normal deletion and delete with compacting. So the normal deletion removes the unreferenced objects, leaving the referenced object and pointers to free space. The memory allocator holds reference to the blocks, of free space where new object can be allocated. And for deletion with compacting, in addition to freeing up the space, the garbage collector will move all the referenced object together to make a bigger chunk of memory free. So that will actually make the memory allocation process much easier and faster. Now, what is generational garbage collection? We have already seen glimpse of uh, generational garbage collection in our previous video where we have discussed how the memory is allocated uh, in heap uh, for the Java application. Let's try to revisit it again. So in the beginning itself, when a new object is getting created, it will be stored to the Eden space. So Eden space is a uh, part of a memory uh, which is under young generation. That is also a part of heap memory. So uh, any new objects which is getting created, they will be allocated uh, space in the Eden space. And when we can see when uh, the Eden space is full, at that time, minor garbage collection will be initiated. So what it will do, it will do the marking. So as you can see on the screen here, it will mark what all unreferenced and referenced objects are there. And all the referenced objects will be moved to one of the survivor spaces by incrementing or adding the aging factor as well and all the unreferenced objects they will be cleaned from the memory. So this cycle will go on uh, every time the Eden space is full minor garbage collection will be initiated and it will move the referenced object to one of the survivor spaces. So here uh, you can see there is some number associated to each object or block here. This number signifies that these many number of garbage collections that particular object has survived. That is why uh, these 
uh, two spaces are termed as survivor spaces because only the survivors of garbage collection objects are placed in these two uh, spaces. In JVM, uh, there is a configurable age uh, after which the objects will be moved from survivor space to the tenure space. You can see in this particular example, uh, after the age of eight, uh, if the object is still referenced, that means it can it is still surviving the garbage collection, then it will be moved from young generation to the old generation. And this cycle will keep on going uh, for all the minor garbage collections. So once uh, it is required for a major garbage collection in tenured, or then JVM will initiate a major garbage collection, which will mark all these uh, unreferenced objects in the old generation and do the cleanup. So this is how generational garbage collection works. The last topic for part one video is heap related JVM arguments. As heap is a type of memory, so it can have a specific amount of uh, storage assigned to it. So all those configurations can be done. We just need to provide the arguments like uh, as given in this table. So hyphen XMS is used to set the initial heap size when JVM starts. So whenever your application is starting or the JVM is starting, then a specific amount of memory is allocated to the heap. That memory can be configured using hyphen XMS uh, argument. Similarly, uh, we can define the maximum heap size as well because as required the JVM, uh, the heap memory will grow if required to allocate more uh, objects then uh, we need to define some maximum heap size as well that can be defined using hyphen xmx and if we want to set the size of young generation itself we can use argument hyphen xmn and uh, if we want to uh, set a starting size of permanent generation permanent generation is a part of memory where uh, mostly permanent components resides like static or some configuration related details so that can be configured using hyphen xx perm size and similar to the heap memory a maximum size can also be defined for permanent generation Permanent generation is actually uh, replaced by Metaspace in Java 8. Now let's see how these parameters are currently configured. So I have just started a Spring Tool suit uh, on my system and I have opened Java Visual VM. So here I can see this JVM is already up. So if I double click on it, in the JVM arguments itself, I can see XMX. So it is nothing but the maximum size of heap, which is defined as 1024 MB. So if I want to change it to uh, 2 GBs, I will make a change as 2048. Uh, if I want to specify indirectly GBs, that also I can do. I can write here 2 then G. So this is how uh, the JVM arguments can be configured to control the size of uh, various memory components inside the heap. Now let's summarize what we have covered in uh, today's video and what is our plan for the next video. Uh, today we have covered what is garbage collection, why do we need garbage collection in our application, what is the process of garbage collection, then we have seen a generational garbage collection end-to-end -end process and in the end we have seen how to configure the memory size in JVM for various heap components. And in our next session, we will cover types of garbage collectors, when to use which collector, depending on uh, the collector features, we will see which collector suits, which kind of applications. Then uh, very important, the performance impact of garbage collection. So there we will cover three different components, stop the world, memory leaks and CPU usage. And in the end, we will see how we can improve uh, the garbage collection performance. So if you like the video, please uh, like, share and subscribe. If you have any queries, please do comment. Thanks for watching.